Hallelujah. Okay. Uh, I'm, I'm going to talk to you for a few minutes on the subject chosen. I'm going to say chosen. Chosen. I feel this again. Like I said, it's a, a prophetic word to this church. Say chosen. Chosen. Okay. Book of Judges chapter 6. It's out of there. Book of Judges chapter 6 and verse 1. And you guys can follow me the story. Most of you know this <clears throat> story. <clears throat> The children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord. Oh, we can all read up here. So the Lord delivered them unto the hand of the Midian for seven years. Everybody says seven years. Seven years. How many know that's a long time? <laughs> that's a very long time. So they're in a precarious position. They used to know their God. They used to be God's people. They used to um, walk by his precepts and his rules, commands, his statutes. And then they abandoned them. And God said, okay. You want to go? Go! And so he delivers them to these brutal <clears throat> oppressors. These guys are harsh, they're cruel, they're mean, they're bullies, the Midianites. So the Israelites, they flee up into the mountains, but these guys come after them. The Bible says there were so many, uh, one translation said they were like grasshoppers, so many. So they would plant their crops. And, and you know, but the Midianites would come and they just would just destroy them. They took their donkeys, their oxen, their, sh their sheep. They begin to starve. They begin to cry to the Lord, please God, okay, okay, we get it. Please come rescue us. Please, Lord. And the Lord responds. He responds in a really weird way. He doesn't come to them and say, okay, here I am. He goes to one man. Verse 12, chapter 6, verse 12. When the angel of the Lord appeared to him, this man is Gideon. It was a Gideon. Yeah. And says unto him, The Lord is with you, you mighty man of Bala. So, I'm reading this verse. And I'm like, wow. If God is going to call a man Mighty? That man, he's probably done some things, right? I mean, to impress God so much that he calls, he says, you, you mighty man. You're like, okay. So I begin to research, you know, I'm, I love doing that. I, and I go through tons of literature. And friends, there is nowhere mentioned before this point of anything that Gideon had ever done to deserve this honor of God calling him mighty man of valor. So I'm just like, oh, okay. This is strange. Lord, have you ever done this before? Just call somebody who's nothing something? So I go, book of Genesis chapter 17 verse 5. Neither shall thy name any more be called Abram, but Abraham, for I have made you the father of many nations. Verse 15 and 16. As for Sarai thy wife, thou shalt not call her Sarai, but you shall call her uh, Sarah. But Sarah shall be her name, okay? She, verse 16, she's will she shall be the mother of nations and kings of people shall be of her now these are guys who didn't have any children but god goes to them comes to them and says you are a father now of many many nations and says actually your name is now father of many i call you father of many and you mama sarai you're sarah now can you imagine Sarah being at the well with all the ladies? Mention water. Hey, Sarai! She's not responding. Hey, Sarai! She's not responding. Finally, she says, Hmm, my name is not Sarai anymore. I'm Sarah. <laughs> yeah, because, you know why? Because I'm the mother of me. Oh, and, and, and my honey, by the way, he's not Abram either. He's Abraham. He's also the father of many nations. They're probably thinking, goo goo. <laughs> but God is calling them what they're not long before they become it. Amen? Okay, Samuel. You guys know the story. 
God's ready to anoint him as the new king. Because send Samuel, prophet Samuel, to Jesse's house. Jesse, I'm here to anoint the next king of Israel. I, he's one of your sons. So this is like, yes. He calls his firstborn Eliab and, and, and you know, Abinadab and Shaman. They go, all seven of them. And it's like, a, God is like saying, mm, 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 no, next, no, next, no, next. After number seven, no, next. And Jesse says, that's it. Prophet says, are you sure? Can you imagine? And then he says, oh, yeah, yeah, you prophet, yeah, prophet. Uh, a good one more. <laughs> He's, but he's out there, you know, he's, he's tending, I don't know that you want him, he's only like 17. The prophet says, I'll wait. Sometimes, we know now that sometimes it would take three days to get somebody who's taking a herd of sheep out grazing. So we don't know how long the prophet waited. Prophet's waiting, so in comes little David, oh, maybe probably muddy and all that, just like, and the Lord says, you, you are. The one. You're gonna you're the king. you this is the king. Anoint him king there. A little shepherd boy. God's calling him what he is not long before he ever becomes him. The Bible is laced with think about Peter. Peter is messed up. Messed up. He's really messed up. He's denied Jesus many times. I don't know him. He even cusses, I don't know him. So he's probably like Jesus appears, he's like, oh. he's, I don't know if he's even wanting to, to, to say, hey, Jesus, it's so good to see you because he's messed up. Jesus comes to him and says, you, upon this rock will I build my church. This broken little rock that just, you are the, you're the man. Peter, I call you what you're not long before you become it. God, what am I saying? God will speak to your potential. He looks at what is inside you. He looks at what you could be, not what you are. Everybody said, God sees me as what I could be. What's inside me? He calls me by my purpose. Ooh. If I were you, I'd get excited. I'd get excited. So, this is Gideon's response. Gideon says to him, because God just, just called him this big thing, you, mighty man of... This is the God of Israel. They've been waiting for him years, and seven years of pain. And God appears, and he's talking to one man, saying, you, go, you're the man. So, he says, um, verse 13, and God says to him, God, Gideon says to him, oh my Lord, if the Lord is with us, why then has all this happened to us? And where are all these miracles which our fathers told us about, saying, Did not the Lord bring us up from Egypt? But now the Lord has forsaken us and delivered us into the hand of the What is he saying? He's saying, Good, <laughs> excuse me, if you're this really awesome God that we've been told about, why are we suffering? How come? Isn't this the classic human response? Right now, this morning, the Holy Ghost is going to stir you up about your destiny. Some of you, big destinies. This room, pastor, big destinies. But your first response is going to be, yeah, but okay, um, how come I don't have a job? How come I'm sick? How come you say, God, thank you. I, okay, I hear you, but, but... If the Lord is with us, why then has all this befallen us? So, I am now into the drama of what's going, the conversation. And I'm waiting to see, what is Gideon going to say? I mean, what is God going to say? Is God going to come and say, um, okay, let me explain why you have the problems. So I'm thinking he's good because that's what's logical. He's, the man has asked a question. Is God going to indulge the question? All right, next verse, verse 14. The Lord looks at him, turned to him and says, Go in this. Everybody read this word. Of yours. <laughs> a 
and you shall save Israel from the hand of many lions. Have I not said you? Now, which might remember he has done nothing? So God, instead of saying, ah, you know, I've let you suffer because he doesn't explain. He just says, no, go in this your might, not mine. Your might, the might of yours, which is what? Nothing so far. And you, one man, the whole nation is besieged for years, for seven years. You can comfortably assume that all the valiant champions have all died off. Because if you're, if you're captured for seven years, you've tried to escape. How many know that? You've tried to go free. You've done everything. All your champions are dead. Only weak men remain. So the Lord is telling this man, you go, you, in your might, and you shall save Israel from the hand of the Midianites. That is insane. That doesn't make sense. So poor Gideon is like, okay, I think I need to explain a little more. Verse 15. Because the Lord, it doesn't seem like you're getting it. So he said to him, Oh my Lord, how can I save Israel? Indeed, my clan is the weakest in Manasseh, and I'm, and I'm the least in my father's house. My translation says, Most translation says, says um, Behold, my family is the is poor Manasseh, and the least in my father's house. Now, one living, new living translation says, um, says, It says, My clan is the weakest in the whole tribe of Manasseh, and I am the least in my entire family. Now, if an African, when an African reads this, we, we get it different. Because you may have this too. We have tribes and clans and families. That's the hierarchy of, of anything in, our, in, our, in Africa. This is Eastern culture, like, like tribal culture like we have over in Africa. When you read this from the American or English, you're like, yeah, tribe, clan, yeah, next. I'm like, ah, guys, this is big. Do you know what he's saying? Okay, first of all, Manasseh was one of the weak tribes. And he is saying, he's, okay, I am from the Baganda tribe. Then within the tribe, I'm from the Mamba clan. And I am a Sempebwa, Sempebwa family. So, tribe, clan, family. Right? He is from one of the weakest tribes ever, Manasseh. And then he's saying, my clan within this tribe is the weakest. So, okay. And then he's saying, I am the least in my family. This is bad. What is he saying? He's saying, God, I'm a really little man. I think you have the wrong address. <laughs> I think you're really talking about you. God, I think you want to go. You know the guy who killed five giants the other day? Go to him. <laughs> oh, oh, you know, yeah, I heard that the, the, there's a bear that came through the camp and this other guy over the other house. I think you want him. God, you don't know that I am not your man. First, let's try to say, God, we're suffering, we're suffering. God is like, no, go, this your might. He's like, okay, okay, God, okay. Uh, you have the wrong guy. Here's my question. When the Holy Ghost comes and stirs, and he stirs, what is your excuse? He's drawing right now. The revelation power of God is here, and he's starting to stir you up. You can be more. You can be greater. I've got greatness inside of you. I've got a mighty woman inside of you. I want you to go. You're gonna, you're gonna deliver people. You're gonna save children. You're gonna, you're gonna build women's shelters. You're going to, you're going to deliver broken kids. You're gonna set kids free from sex slavery. You're gonna, this all this. You're gonna build schools. You're gonna, there's stuff that's stirring up. What are you telling the Holy Ghost back? Uh, Lord, uh, excuse me. I'm a woman. Girls don't do that. I am single. Uh, I, don't, I don't have an education. I, I am from a bad family. I am broken. I'm wounded. Some people have even said, Lord, I, I just don't feel like it. What is your excuse? Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor. Yeah. What's your excuse? 
What's your excuse? <laughs> so, guys, let's go back to the conversation. So, I am thinking, what is God going to say? Because he's, definitely, he's telling him, Lord, uh, time out, I'm the wrong guy. <laughs> Next verse. The Lord said to him, I will be with you. And you, little man, that you think you're little, you will destroy the Midianites as if they were fighting against one man. Whoa. Powerful. Basically, I'm going to be with your little guy and you're going to do the impossible. You're going to do what has tormented your village, your people, for seven years. You little man, you're the man. <laughs> you're the man. So, first miracle, Gideon accepts. To do a very stupid thing. <laughs> to do an impossible, to just, he accepts as the first miracle. Then the second miracle, he gathers 32,000 men. Remember, he is small, he is little, he's never done anything, tiny. And the big boys, numerous, tormented them for seven years, but he from where? We don't know. He finds 32,000 who said, yes, we're gonna fight. Yeah. Isn't that awesome? That's the first, now we grow, when we read this, when we read these things, we just gloss over. That's a big one. He, he manages to get them. So, verse 2, so chapter 7, verse 2, the story continues. So, he gathers them and he comes to the Lord and promises, said, God, um, God, you must be proud of me now. Because uh, first of all, I accepted and then, and then I found some friends and, and God, yeah, okay, we're going to go do it. So the Lord says, bravo, great, great. And he says, but I have a problem. And the Lord says to Gideon, you have too many warriors with you. If I let you, and this is powerful, listen, if I let all of you fight the Midianites, the Israelites will boast to me that they saved themselves by their own strength. This is powerful. The guy, poor guy, has tormented, tortured himself, gathered 32,000 people, and the Lord is saying, uh uh, too many. Now, as a scholar, I'm thinking, I better find out what God means. Because you think if God's going to say 32,000, if, 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 if God is saying there are too many, then do we have 5,000 Midianites? So God is saying there are too many? Because that's what would make sense, right? Do you know how many Midianites there were? 135,000. 32 against 135,000. The odds, one to four. But God is saying that if I let you go with these odds of one to four, you're going to get back to the camp and you're going to say, we did it. We did it. one, two, three, four. Each one, one, two, three, four. God helped us too. But we did it. We were great. We killed four each. We are champions. Woo. So God is saying, I don't want those odds. You are too many. I want to make it more challenging. <laughs> Verse 3, he says, Whoever is timid and afraid may leave and go home. The Bible says 22,000 of them went home, leaving only, <laughs> leaving only, <laughs> so, so, that means there were 22,000 chickens, you know. <laughs> Whoever is afraid. Now, again, this is even that's ridiculous because how many know everybody was afraid? How many know even Gideon was afraid? But Gideon didn't go home. 22,000 went. This is where I get my number of 35,000, by the way. 20,000 of them went home. Only 10,000 who were willing to fight. Leaving 10. So, so now there are 10,000. And I'm thinking, okay, God is happy, right? Verse 4. But the Lord told Gideon, there are still too many. Bring them down to the spring and I'll sort out who will go with you and who will not. Okay, the odds are 10,000 to 135,000. 
1 to 13. And God is like, uh-uh, it's too, too many. Because you just might think. If I give you the victory, you might think, you know what? Somehow we were like, uh, 13. We did it. God helped us. But we did it. I want to make this ridiculous. Verse 7. By these 300 that lapped, will I rescue you? I'll give you victory. I'm going to send all the others home. 9,700 leave and there's only 300 remaining. And verse, verse 9, yeah, no, verse 7, he says, by these 300, I will rescue you. God is basically saying, now the odds, 300 to 135,000, you know what the odds are? 1 to 450. <laughs> Each man has to take out 450. And now God is like, yeah, I'm happy. <laughs> I like those ridiculous, stupid, impossible, crazy odds where it is absolutely impossible that you can ever, ever win. I'm happy. <laughs> what is God saying, you guys? That God, when He does His thing in your life, He doesn't want you to have any confusion as who has done it. And God takes you, takes you, uses you, turns you around and just oh, and causes you to just become something, anything. He doesn't want you to ever think you are any, you are anything, but it was his power, his glory. He deserves the glory. He wants the glory. He wants the glory. And sometimes God will strip you of the comforts and the predictability and the this uh, giftings or whatever, he'll strip you to leave you in a place of vulnerability where he will show off. It's like, God, I got a job, I thought I was great, and, and now I just, I just lost my job. God's like, uh huh. Because now I'm, I'm about to show you who is the man. I'm about to show you who is really holding you. Don't you ever get confused about who is holding you. That's why. I, but Paul says, in him I live and move and have my being. It's, amen? amen. It's, it's him. It's, everybody says Jesus. Says Jesus. Jesus. Says Jesus. Jesus. Says Jesus. 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 All right, we're going to go through this real quick. Number nine, arise and go. <laughs> Get up. Go down to the Midianites camp. For I have given you victory over them. Amen. Verse 10, and then... He says, but if you're afraid to attack, go down to the camp and with your servant, Pura. So he, you know, he says, okay, I've given you the victory, but if you're still afraid, which, poor guy, he was afraid, you know. But he said, but if you're still afraid, I want you to go and eavesdrop. And the Bible says that Gideon actually went to eavesdrop because he was afraid. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, yeah. it's okay if you're afraid. Because sometimes, sometimes, I mean, you know, sometimes in the faith world we think, oh, you can't be fear, you can't be, you can't be afraid, you know, sir. No, 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 it's okay. Look at him and say, neighbor, yeah. it's okay if you're afraid. Yeah. Actually, it says, neighbor, yeah. if it doesn't scare you, yeah. it's not big enough. Yeah. Yes, amen, because actually there cannot be faith unless you're overwhelmed. If, because sometimes we think, okay, uh, you know, if, if, if you're in a place of uncertainty and fear, and that's your candidate for faith. In fact, faith only comes alive when you're overwhelmed. Amen? Amen. So, but then we live lives where you want to make sure I'm okay, I'm okay. Well, when, whenever you get to a place where the enemy is ah, it's overwhelming you, now you're in Faith Avenue. Amen? You're in the place of faith. Because faith walks when it doesn't know what's going to happen. That's faith. Amen? Okay, where, where we go? So, so we know the story. I want to just quickly end this. So, Gideon, next day he gathers them and, you know, a sword for the Lord, a sword for Gideon. They blow their horns. Verse 22, the Lord causes the army, causes the men, what is it? Uh, but 300 blew their trumpets. The Lord set every man's sword against his companions throughout the whole camp, and the army fled. So they flee, and those who, who didn't flee, who, or those who were not killed, they flee. So great victory, amen? 
great victory and and so suffer times that's where I stopped for years that's where I stopped in the story I'm like oh yeah great wasn't that a great story but there's so much more think about this ow 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 we're suffering seven years please God come to my rescue come to our rescue please remember us God comes to one man gets him all stirred up goes through all this exercise do you notice that Gideon did not fight Gideon and his 300 did not fight but God gave the victory so I'm thinking God why would you torture the poor guy <laughs> Why? How come when you were ready to rescue your children, why didn't you go to the Israelites and say, guys, I've heard you, I've heard you. Okay, stay there. I'll be back. And you go, and you do what only you did at the end of the day, which is you stir them up, you set the sword against them, they kill each other, they fight. And why didn't you do that? And then come back and say, guys, it's done. <laughs> go. Why didn't you do that? Why torture the poor guy and tell him, you can, you can, and he's like, no, I can't, I'm smaller than you, you know, you can, there are too many, and you trim their forces. Why this whole exercise? Why, God, why? And I began to see throughout the Bible, guys, God wants us to show up, even if we're not doing the fighting. In fact, until there's a Gideon, there's no deliverance. And without Gideon, they're still hiding. God needed a man to say, Lord, okay, I will answer this challenge and I'll go stand for you. Stand for you like I am going to fight, yet I am not going to fight. <laughs> God wants you to show up and stand up. Stand up against the roaring, impossible, big enemy and say, devil, how dare you, dare you take my family? How dare you take my job? How dare you, do you destroy my, my health? How dare you? I am taking you on, knowing you're not going to fight. Because he fights. Actually, David, little David, little David, had the, he's the one who made, he said, made the statement, says, the battle belongs to the Lord. He does the fight. Look at him and say, neighbor, he does the fighting. He does the fighting. But God wants to position you. You need to get positioned. And this is what this is the word to, for this church. God is calling you to stand up. Yeah, but I'm in the Filipina. Yeah, but I am not married. Yeah. Well, shut up. <laughs> all, all the excuses, just tell them. Tell them. Tell yourself. Shut up. Shut up, Dennis. Shut up. Shut up. You are going to do the mandate of the Lord. It's not up to you. It is the battle is the Lord's, but you have to stand. You have to stand. Without Daniel, there, there's no deliverance. Without David, without... There, the God always needs men and women to stand up for him. Then he can do only he can do. He never gives us victories on platters. You have got to stand up because you have been chosen. Amen? Amen. They will say, he's chosen me. He's chosen me. Listen to this. First Corinthians 128. And the base things of the world, things which are despised, has God chosen. Yes, things which are not to bring to note the things that are. I think, I think so. First Ephesians 1, 7. According as he has chosen us before the foundation of the earth, that we may be holy without blame before him in love. Before him in love. Yeah. He has chosen us. Somebody say, look at him. Look at him and say, neighbor. neighbor. He's chosen me. He's chosen me. Neighbor. neighbor. He's, chosen you. He's chosen you. Neighbor. neighbor. He's, chosen you. He's chosen you. Say, neighbor. neighbor. You don't need to be anything. You don't need to be a champion. You don't need to be a champion. You don't need to be strong. Just say, neighbor, neighbor, you stand in his might. Who said, neighbor, neighbor, you stand in his might. 
I'm gonna tell you a story as we finish here. Um, I was in Vietnam and and the Lord was moving, revival was just blowing all over and, and missionaries were just, just winning just thousands and thousands of Vietnamese to the Lord and and uh, this man, the interpreter, their interpreter was his name was uh, um Fang Hien. So Fang Hien um he's just excited because God is using him because the missionaries can't really speak the language. He's needed. He's critical to what God was doing. So the Viet Cong, they decide, you know what? We're going to arrest Fang Hien. That will stop the work of God. So they arrested him and put him in jail for 18 months. He's just really tortured. They're torturing him, trying to reprogram him. They take away all his Bibles. They take away everything. They take away every English. They, they try to tell him, you are, you've been used. They try to get in his brain. And finally, he's exhausted. 18 months of torture. He's exhausted. And he says, you know what, God, I give up. I, I don't know. I, maybe you're not coming. Maybe maybe it's not me. Maybe you don't. I don't know. I just Tomorrow, I'm, just, I'm not going to pray. I'm not going to do anything because I uh, maybe maybe I'm, just, I'm not going to be a Christian tomorrow. How's that? Lord, I because I don't feel your power. I don't feel you rescuing me. It seems like you've abandoned me. The next morning, the, the as he's out, because of this really concentration camp, the, the commander calls him and says, Fang Hing, come. You're supposed to go work in the quarters, in the officer's quarters. So he's like, okay. So he goes in there and it's filthy. He's supposed to clean the toilets. Filthy toilets. The officers are using their toilet papers, or their really papers, and they're dumping this stuff in, in some, all over the place, and he has to pick it up. Pick it up, so he's like, "Ooh, what are you punishing me?" I don't know, you know, you know. Okay, so so as he's picking up this crazy used toilet papers and papers, sorry, ladies, he's picking them up because guys are like, "Oh," the ladies are like, "Ooh," <laughs> so he's picking them up. He's picking them up. He sees English writing, and it's like, ah, he takes it because he just wants to read English. He's curious. And, and he puts it in his pocket and, and uh, yeah, to, you know, and he finishes his duty and he goes back to his little room. He can't wait to go back to his room. He just wants to see English. That's all. It's just, you know. So he takes it out and it's, of course, filthy. And, and, and you know, in his little, little tent and, and he wants to read English. So he begins to read. What shall we say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall separate us from the love of God? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or sword, or nakedness, or peril? No, in all these things we're more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor power, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Now he breaks down and he cries. He cries like a baby. And he's like, God, you're after me. Yes, nothing can separate me from your love. Next day, Fang Hin Somehow he has this feeling that perhaps there's another piece of paper. And so he actually volunteers. I want to know the prison's quarters, the officer's quarters. And indeed, he finds another piece that comes at night. And the following day, the following day, one of the officers was using a Bible for toilet paper. But after one month, Fang Hin has the Book of Romans. Those writings helped Fang Hin endure the persecution again 
got out to become one of the most influential revivalists of our time. In his brokenness, Fang Him was chosen. Even though his circumstances were saying no, Fang Him was chosen. You are chosen. God's chosen you. And God loves you. And he has greatness on the inside of you. We are going to pray. We're going to pray. Are you guys ready? Oh, we're going to pray. Oh, we're going to pray. Woo! Power of God is here. Woo! I want to minister to some people, though, before we do. Ah, lady there with the black bag. You black. Yeah, you Yeah. Let's put the bag down. Just come stand right here. It's okay. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Just right there. Just stand and stand right there. Just look at me. And just hear the Lord saying, You have had a hard journey. And it's been a tough journey, especially the last three years. Tough. And sometimes, yes, you know God. And sometimes you wonder, Lord, are you ever going to come through? Lord, when are you going to come through? Lord, how are you going to come through? Because it looks like this is too hard. And the Lord this morning is saying, I have you here for my purpose. And all this is going to make sense eventually. But now, it's tough. You Keep your eyes fixed on Jesus and let his love pour over you. Close your eyes and put your hands up in the air like that. Father, thank you for touching your servant. Touch her now and Lord, may she see her circumstances through your eyes. In Jesus' name, amen. Sister in white, come. Yeah. Yes, you may go back. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You see the Lord saying, I've heard you cry. Rise for your children. You've heard you cry. I know. I know. Only I understand. Sometimes you 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 want to say, Don't you guys get it? Don't you guys get how hard it is? And you kind of want a pity party around you. But and it feels lonely in this journey. You're in a very a place of, you're in a valley right now. And the Lord is saying, I'm with you. I'm with you right here. I am in this storm with the, all the craziness. I am here. Will you trust me with your life? Will you trust me even when things don't make sense? The Lord is inviting you to trust in Him completely. Trust Him fully. So put those hands up. I will bless her. Just Let's, let's raise our hands towards her and bless her. Lord, we bless this, your servant. She is blessed. She is blessed. She is blessed. In Jesus' name. Amen. Mm. All right, brother, come. Yeah, this one's running. This one here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Is it okay for a few minutes we do this? Is it fine? Amen. Thank you, Lord. Um, as he is saying, but this is not what I really plan to do. This is not where I plan to be. And because about five years ago, you planned to be somewhere else in your journey. But God has you here. And sometimes you struggle with, Lord, why here? Why now? How come? How come it isn't? Well, how come I'm not there yet? And, and, and you wonder, Lord, how long? The word of the Lord is, I have you here. Let my peace reign. And you prepare. This is a season for you to be preparing vigorously. Because promotion is coming. And it's going to overtake you very fast. And when it comes, that's not time to prepare. Time to prepare is now. But it takes faith to prepare for something that you don't see yet. But doctors do all the time. Lawyers do. They prepare for their whatever. But Christians, we don't want to prepare. We just want to get 
woke up and we're just, woo! The Lord is calling you to a place of preparation. You're going to get up earlier, read. You're going to get up, go to bed late, reading, preparing, stretching inside. Because promotion's coming fast. It's going to overtake you. Amen? That's the reason why you are not there where you thought you'd be by now. Does that make sense? Amen. Can we just bless him? Put your hands up before the Lord. God, thank you for blessing this, your servant. Thank you that you have him here. Right now, this is the place, the time. Thank you, Father. He's blessed. We call him blessed. Yes. I'm going to say blessed. Yes. In Jesus' name. Amen. All right. That's somebody here. You're a businessman, woman. And uh, you've just been having, you just got some really bad news this month. Uh, your business is in trouble. God wants to, has a word for you this morning. Your business is in trouble and and um, God wants to do something in your life this morning. Come, if you if you have the courage to come. And then somebody else, you um, have been feeling like a numbness on, the, on your left side. And it's been really worrying you, but you're not even telling anybody yet. It's there and it's nagging. God wants to heal you. Come as well. Um, then, um, Mom, come in. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, come sir. Thank you. Um, you've got so many years of planting and planting and planting, <clears throat> but you're in a time where you haven't seen as much as you planted, and sometimes you wonder, God, did I lose some of the crop? What happened, God? I, I didn't see as much, and you, you're wondering if you put the seasons of your life where you feel like you put too much, and you didn't get out as much as you put in, and, and sometimes you feel, you wish you, you wish you could go back and kind of do, do things and do life differently. And the Lord is saying that, no, I have you here right now for my path, my purpose and you're going to you're about to see an explosion of some of the things that you've harvested of, 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 of what you've sown like a big harvest is coming Amen Amen, God bless you yeah. Thank you Thank you Jesus I see the Lord saying um, you're asking, I hear you asking but exactly where where do I fit? Exactly. What is my, what's my full, you, you've got competences, you're very gifted, so you've got, you've got abilities to do so many things. And, then, and sometimes that, everybody's like admiring your abilities to do all these things. You're saying, yeah, but God, what, where's my sweet spot? And you've been waiting, what's my sweet spot? Well, and you're trying to get mentors and books and read and look out. And the Lord is saying that what I have for you to do hasn't been done yet. There isn't. There isn't. It's a special, unique. You know this from when you're a child. The Lord has placed a special anointing over your life and it's been declared and spoken over you and, and but you're about to explode into it. Right now, though, it's time to stop looking out and just to wait upon the Lord. To wait upon the Lord. He's going to bring out. Woo! They're going to say, where did she come from? And, but you know, you will know that you have had years of private, painful preparation, looking and waiting and wondering. The Lord is with you. Can we just raise our hands towards her? The Lord is with you, woman of God. The Lord is with you, woman of God. Let's say this. Let's say that. The Lord is with you. Again, the Lord is with you. Say, you are a woman of God. Say, but say, 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 we release you, release you. to flow, 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 woman of God. Flow. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, brother. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. Woo. Woo. Big shoes. Big shoes. You're stepping into big shoes. And it's like, ah. Uh, everybody says, oh yeah, you're going to do great. You're going to be 
but you go back and you're terrified because you kind of you want things done right. You sometimes struggle with even perfectionism because you, you just you know but it's, but we don't do it if we can't do it right. You know that, that type of thing, and that's been your that's your Achilles heel because. The next season, God's going to just completely just ruin all your plans. But, which he wants to do, that just like Gideon, he's messing up your little dominoes. It's just, it's just like, God's just, he's jumping in and he's doing it like he wants it done. And he's going to take your life and you are going to explode. So many things you sometimes take what God gives you and you sometimes trim it down to fit some of the boxes that you have. The Lord is saying, no more. You do what hasn't been done before. You don't have to measure my instructions based on your surroundings. You build big, build big, and I shall bring them in, build big. You take it and run, run, run. Yeah, but yeah, you will run swiftly, says the Lord. You will run swiftly. God gives you thrift and gives you swiftness. You shall run fast. You shall run swiftly. And I see team, 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 team. You be courageous. Sometimes you feel like, oh God, you know, who is who is with me? The Lord is saying, don't worry about that. I'm bring him. But you gotta be careful who you surround yourself with. Um, um, just don't worry about how it's gonna be. Take the next step. You 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 take the next step. Can we just raise our hands towards him? This 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 man of God. Ooh, man of God. Blessed. Somebody say blessed. Yes. One more time. Say blessed. Yes. Ooh, one more time. Say blessed. Yes. One, more, one more time. Say blessed. Jesus name. Amen. Woo! Mama, will you get up? Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Where are all those children? You've been birthing and birthing and birthing and birthing. You've been birthing and birthing. They're coming. They're coming. They're coming. They're coming. You shall. You're the mother of nations. The mother of nations. You shall live a full life. As the servant of the Lord, I declare, with full life, the Lord shall satisfy you. You shall live out all the days of your life. The days have been numbered, and there are just plenty of days, and you shall live them to the full. Fear not when you hear the rumblings inside your body. No. You shall live a full life. You shall live a full life. You shall live a full life. Who can we just can we just can we just like say bless you, mama? Bless you. Come on, come on, say bless you. Say we bless you. Say we bless you. Say we bless you. Say we love you. We bless you. We love you. Filled, full, full the goodness of God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Mama, you may sit. Hallelujah. All right. Woo. Hallelujah. Wow, wow, wow. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Woo. You deserve the glory and the honor. Sing. So we live as we live.
Glory to God. Yeah. Woo! Guys, we don't have to call you out. The power of God is here. It's so strong. And you can tap into what God wants. And we're gonna, what we're going to do as we end, and here's what we're going to do. I want you to pray for this. Um, um, all the excuses that the devil has been using, we're about to face them now. Amen? And we're going to have, we're going to have victory. I'm going to say, I'm going to have victory. Let's say, I'm not, I'm not saying, I'm not taking this home. I'm not taking these excuses home. Amen? Amen? Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Um, I shall wipe away your tears, says the Lord God Almighty. I shall wipe away your tears. And I see you crying. You've cried so hard sometimes that you don't even have any tears to cry because of the excruciating pain. And uh, why me? How come? Why me? How come? Why me? Why me? Why me? You ask long into the night, why me? The Lord is with you. Right there, in your place of hurt and pain, the Lord is with you. The Lord is with you. And you may never get all the answers, your questions answered. In fact, you won't get all your questions answered. Nobody ever gets all his questions answered. But we live by faith. We walk by faith. You walk into what God has for you. And stop looking at them in the rear view mirror. There's a lot. There's a lot. Don't look behind. Your future lies ahead of you. Your better days. Just, just listen to this. Your better days are ahead of you. Your better days are ahead of you. Your better days are ahead of you. Can we just raise our hands towards her and just... I just said, blessed woman of God. Woo, blessed woman of God. In Jesus' name. Amen. Come in, my sister. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Because you are great. Yeah. Wow. Wow. It feels like like you're a nomad, like you you're here and then you're there. And then you're here and then you're there and it's you're bouncing between several different boxes. And God, which box? And the Lord hear the Lord say, None of the above. It's got its purpose for your life. And it's unique. And you know you're unique. Where do I fit? Where do I fit? And and you have this idea of okay, Lord, I'm, I'm gonna kind of do this while I wait. I'm gonna kind of do this while I wait. And then the Lord is saying, No, this is not a waiting station. Um, he's making you here. He's making you where you are. He's making you this this vessel that He has. It's a beautiful vessel that He has in mind. But right now you look at the piece and you're like, Lord, I don't know what you're doing. I don't know what you, this doesn't look attractive, this doesn't look... And the Lord is like, he's shaking his head and he's laughing and saying, My daughter, I know what I am making. It's pretty, it's beautiful. And when it's done, everybody will see the beauty of it. But now, I'm chipping away, I'm chipping away. And you've had a long season of, wow, Lord, when am I going to get relief? What? It seems like one thing after another, after another. Just relax. It's the potter. And he's doing his thing in your life. Amen. Put his hands up. Father, we bless this woman of God. Oh, she's blessed. She's blessed. Let's say blessed. Let's say blessed. Let's say blessed. In Jesus' name. Amen. Man of God. Come. Thank you, Lord. 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 You wrestle with God, but you give up the fight. You, you give up. You wrestle, and then you stop fighting. And then sometimes you wrestle again. You start fighting, and you're like, "Okay, God, 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 I'm with. You. I, okay, I get it, Lord." But then you're like, but, 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 God, I can't, can you explain that again? I just see this conversation going back, Lord. 
is this where you want me to be? Uh, is this is this how you want me to serve you? Is this uh, and you feel you feel you have the sense of I have so much, to, I have so much inside of me. But God, I, I want to pour, and, and the Lord is saying, I'm working on you. I'm working, and for you this morning, the invitation is peace. Peace. You don't have to strive. You don't have to strive. There isn't any striving. You have plowed and plowed and plowed. Now you water and wait. But while you wait, it feels like you're doing nothing. Because you're so used to working. You're used to, give me, give me something to do, give me something to do. And sometimes your anxiety comes from, I don't have much to do. I don't have enough to do. And the Lord is saying, uh-uh. You don't have to do, 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 do. Wait and water with your faith amazing harvest coming for you. An amazing harvest, both out of your life and around you. The Lord is making something awesome of you. Awesome. You're a man of God. You have the word of authority. Speak the word of authority. Speak the word of authority. The situations around you that you need to take care of, just go speak over them. Speak over them. Amen. Let's just Let's just wait and pray, 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 and just speak over him. Just say, "Bless, man of God." Bless, say, "You're blessed, man of God." Bless, man. You're blessed, man of God. Bless, man. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. All right, here's what we're gonna do. Um, first of all, two invitations. The first one is, you're here this morning. You don't know Jesus. In fact, if you died right now, you'd be in trouble. Because you kind of know about him. You kind of know the songs. You come to church. People think you're a Christian. But you know you're not living right. The Lord wants to explode into your life. He wants to make it real and authentic. So, let's close our eyes like that. And when I count to three, if that's you, just put your hand up in the air. Just say, I want to have a full-on real encounter with Christ. And I don't want to live the same kind of life I've been living. I'm ready. I'm ready to change, to love Jesus, to just fall in love with Him completely. You ready? On the count of three, let's put that hand up. One, two, three. Put it up if that's you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Yeah, there's tons of hands, tons of hands going up. Very great, great, great. Thank you. Let's put it up, put it down. Thank you. Put it up, put it down. Put it up. Yeah, good. Put it up one more time. One, two, three. Put it up. Yeah. Put it out. Okay, great. Many hands. Okay, here's what we're going to do. Everybody stand up on your feet, please. Stand up on your feet, everybody. Stand up on your feet. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, glory to God. Okay. If you put your hand up, I want to ask you to do one more thing that is takes a bit more courage. But we've all done this. It's not to embarrass you in any way. If you put your hand up on that invitation, you say, Lord, I'm ready to have a boom an encounter with you. Change my life. Rock my world, Jesus. I don't want to live like I've been living. If that's you, I want you to take a step out of your seat wherever you are and come stand right here with me. On the count of three, we go. You ready? One, two, three. Just come out. Come out. Don't think, don't overthink. Don't overthink. Just know there's many, many hands that went up. You're not going to be alone. See, they're coming. They're coming. Let's just let's, let's sing something, brother. Thank you, Lord. Ah. Thank you, sir, over there. Thank you, Jesus. Many people, many more hands went up. You're here. Come, come, we're going to wait for you. We're going to wait for you. Thank you, thank you, Mom. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Yes, thank you, ma'am. Thank you. I know you're thinking, 
I've never done this. I only just came. I don't want people to know if this is not about you or if, if you if, again, if you if you if you died right now and you were in front of Jesus, would you say, yeah, you know, Jesus, I could have gone, but you know, there were too many people, or you know, uh, those excuses don't work. Right now, imagine Jesus in front of you and saying, I want to have your life. Give it to me. It's an invitation for the most amazing life you could ever imagine. And we're giving it to you right now. We invite you to come and have an encounter with Jesus Christ. So if you're there, you're kind of thinking, I don't know, I'm not so sure, I challenge you, come right now. Come right now. And oh no, but I'm in the middle of the row and I don't know if all those people, they're going to make way for you. They're going to make way for you. And I'll do one thing as well. Everybody, look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, do you know Jesus? And, and on the other side, and then say, 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 neighbor, would you want me to walk down with you? And, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. And if, and if they do, if they're kind of like, yeah, just bring him. Just walk, him, walk down with them. As we sing the song. Uh, chorus. And because he sort of scripted prayer, but just with sincere hearts, invited Jesus to come into their lives. He is so real. And they're about to start such a, a powerful adventure. Can we all say this? I'm going to say, especially you guys up here, say, Father God. Say, Father God. I thank you for sending Jesus to die for me. Wash away my sin by Jesus' precious blood. Make me whole. Write my name in the Lamb's book of life. I thank you that today I begin a new life. I begin a new life. I begin a new life. A life lived for you. Be Lord of my life. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Congratulations. Because He lives. I can face tomorrow. Be you to walk a God adventure of faith. 
I'm a woman, I don't have a job, I don't have a training, I am, I am broken, I had an abortion, I'm a sinner, I'm a, I'm, I'm a, I made mistakes, I, I, I don't know, I don't speak English well, I, I, I never went to school, I uh, am the wrong color, whatever, whatever you give. I want you to imagine those excuses, and I want you to despise those excuses, because those excuses have held you back. Every time God's come around you and said, son, daughter, we can do this. We can, we can, we can take the Midianites. You go take the Midianites. You say, yeah, but, yeah, but, 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 but the timing is wrong. I'm not ready. I am all the crazy excuses we give. I want you to imagine them, and they're in the palm of your hand right now. Just imagine them and just, uh, uh. I want to count to three, and when I do, you're gonna open. The, don't open them. Don't open. You're gonna open your fist, your palms fist, and you're, just, and, and you're gonna be free. So it's a prophetic gesture, right now. Just, just so keep those fists clenched. Father, thank you for these your people. Lord, I've spoken your word as you instructed me, and God, you want to do so much more. Lord, you long to do so much more. Your word says your eyes move to and fro. You're looking for a man, a woman to use God. God, in this room, just the hundreds of women and men who are saying, Lord, we want you to use us. We will go. We will go. We will go. We will go and just, just yeah, we'll slay. We shall slay these Midianites, God. But God, these excuses. We're like Gideon right now. We're ready to release them. Low self-esteem, rejection, pain, brokenness, everything in the past. God, we're ready to release it. And all those excuses, what's crazy is they have nothing to do with the future. They're all past. And God, the devil uses this all the time to stop us. We are done being stopped by the enemy. And God, right now in the name of Jesus, we relinquish, we set ourselves free. In Jesus' name. I want you to just open the palm of your hand, just like this. Just, you're free. You just say, God, I'm free. Everybody say, I'm free. No more excuses. Say, no more excuses. Say, Lord, I will go. Lord, I will go. Lord, send me. Lord, send me. Lord, send me. Send me, Lord. I shall go. I shall go. I want you to just begin to praise God right now. Father, thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, come on, come on. Just worship Jesus. Yeah, just worship Him. Just worship Him, worship Him, worship Him. 